Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, your resident Darth Despondos at your service, ready to give you some more insight into the mind of metal. Today we are talking about Glenn Benton's hilarious stage antics of heckling the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had uh, gotten some of uh, Deicide's uh, live albums, uh, they're fucking killer. One of my favorites is um, When London Burns, I've been listening to that, that shit off quite often here lately. Now, I, I had uh, I've only seen Deicide once. I saw them here last November at a small venue uh, next in my neighborhood. And uh, even though it was small, it was jam-packed. I mean, we really made Glenn and the crew feel welcome. And, uh, and that's going to be kind of part of what I'm talking about here. Um, well... I didn't know, you know, and since I had never seen them live, you know, I only had heard, you know, their studio albums so far, um, but I just, like I said, I got, I got like all, every single album, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if I have all the, if they have any splits or anything like that, I think I might have one, um, I just kind of went on Amazon and bought a bunch, I think I got them all, I'll have to check again, but, um, Well, I didn't realize, well, I didn't realize that Glenn, you know, had a type of on-stage humor about him, you know, in between songs. And I got a little taste of that at, at the concert. Um, well, I, I was standing out smoking a cigar, and as him and the band were walking in, and a lot of, a lot of folks were coming up to him and, you know, shaking his hand and thanking him for bringing us some killer death metal through the years, and, you know, he was really appreciative and, you know, glad to meet these folks, and, uh, but as he was walking in, he kind of made a, a comment, I overheard him, he goes, uh, this, this venue, this sound system is probably gonna suck, <laughs> you know, and I, I thought, and I knew he was kind of a, kind of an abrasive individual, he's a, he's a biker, and, you know, he's, doesn't take any shit from anybody, I remember the interview with him, between him and Bob Larson way back in the day, and that was back, you know, before I was into metal like I am now, and, you know, and I was a Christian, and, you know, thinking he was a bad dude, and all that. So I thought it, you know, it was just, you know, and I didn't really interpret it as him being too much of an asshole, maybe being on borderline. And well, when I was, you know, watching the concert, and I, there was a bunch of bunch of us up there, you know, taking video of him, and he saw it, and he goes, "Ah, yes, YouTube raping band since 2005," and <laughs> it's kind of funny, and I. I kind of took it as in being a little serious, you know, being serious maybe. But that kind of, those that, that impression was squashed when I was listening to When London Burns. And just about every single song in between each song, you know, he was making making jokes all the time. You know, he says, "Okay, let's keep it going, you bunch of ding-dongs." And uh so as I was listening to that, and I started, I was thinking back in my mind, you know, that, uh, starting to think that, okay, maybe what he said there at the concert wasn't so, you know, wasn't him being any kind of an asshole at all, you know, even more so. Um, and then, <laughs> then he makes, then he starts introducing the guys in the bands, or the rest of the members in the band, and there's like a couple members there, uh, from other bands that were with him, um, And, uh, well, Jack Owen, uh, you know, has been with him for quite a while, so he introduces Jack, he goes, 
Jack Owen of Cannibal Corpse, and uh, so-and-so from Vital Remains. And then Glenn says, and you know me as Steve, and then he starts, then they start playing. <laughs> and actually kind of is like, wait a minute, that can't be right. And I was like, could that, could it be somebody else? And the way, and I, it's like, it's, it's his voice, it's like, and I didn't, then I didn't even bother checking, it's like, it's Glenn, you know, he's making it, it's like, oh, okay, then it all started coming together. So then I, so then I realized, you know, he fully, you know, was making a joke. He was making a joke about that YouTube comment, because I'm sure he knows that mediums like YouTube have actually been helping bands like himself. It's giving, you know, bands with his prominence more of an opportunity in this day and age, you know, back when, before the internet and before Napster and all MP3 and a lot of these other, you know, downloadable website, downloadable song websites, uh, well, you only the only bands that really had any opportunity to make money or get like a con get a, you know a international tour or a national tour um, were like bands like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, you know, that were already kind of established. Well, then other bands, you know, had to have their own scene. That's kind of, that's actually where the punk movement in England actually found its voice, and even here in America, you know, that small band scene, you know, because there was no way they were getting in to Wembley Stadium or Madison Square Garden, at least not yet, you know, um, and sometimes a lot of the people that would want to go to those uh, concerts, you know, they were expensive tickets, and they probably didn't have the money or need or want to spend the money to go, probably, you know, couldn't afford it, so they could go to small shows at CBGB's or, you know, wherever another small venue would be, and, um, so in the internet age, uh, the internet has kind of become an equal opportunity for bands and anything else, even, like, your resident Darth Despondos of Despondency Music. I get to have my voice here. It's a small voice, but it's a voice nonetheless. Yet I still have to compete with other bigger names, and you just have a much more opportunity, but you got to still work hard at it if you want to make it as big as that. Sometimes you have to make compromises. Um, you have to change things up a bit. Edit the videos, unlike what I do. You know, I don't do <laughs> often. I just like to shoot and upload Um, I've edited a few videos, you know, I might do it more in the future, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I once, I, I listened to those live albums from DSI, then I realized, yeah, Glenn is actually probably joking. There might be some, you know, he might believe it a little bit, but I think he's, he's been in the business a long time, so he knows, you know, and he's, and even so, it's, it's, what they've researched that, you know, even while the Napster thing was going on, that actually Napster helped the music industry more than it hurt. It was mainly just that it was hurting the really greedy uh, record companies that, you know, charging almost 20 bucks for a CD, you know, getting close to 20 bucks. They were just gouging customers, you know. So then here comes a new medium, you know, that seems like a threat, well, then they want to kind of shut it down, you know, and I watch, there's some documentaries on uh, Napster, or not Napster, but on uh, Netflix that you, that I, you can check out and it kind of goes through all that, um, you know, and then eventually everybody kind of got on board, so, but anyway, that's my two cents for the day, I hope you enjoyed my insight into Mr. Glenn Benton's stage antics, so if you have not seen DSI, if he makes some kind of a comment that you're not sure where he's coming from, he's probably joking. Talk to you later. Like and subscribe.